Ah, the Amiga. So, so very awesome. It was a home computer that had great games with great music. However, many of these games aren't very well known. Yet, faithful Amiga fans are around often paying tribute to the awesomeness they experienced when they were children. I myself am an Amiga fan, but in a different way. I'm only 16 and I'm American, so I really didn't experience the Amiga age. If it wasn't for my major obsessions for Factor V Star Wars Rogue Squadron games, I probably would have never found this wonderful machine. Speaking of Factor V, some of the most adored Amiga games were their Turrican games. The main reason I tell you about all of this is it all has to do with one man. Chris Hulsbeck. I consider Chris Hulsbeck to be the world's greatest video game music composer and one of the best musicians in general. He did music for most of Factor V's games, such as the Turrican series, the Star Wars Rogue Squadron games, and their conversion of R-Type. However, there were several, several games that he did music for that weren't by Factor V, most of them on the Amiga. One of these games was Jim Power. There are many versions of this game, so let's start off with the Amiga original. It's a lot like Ghosts and Goblins with some Contra and Turrican elements. Plus, after all, Chris Wolfsbeck's doing the music. Now, from that description, you would automatically think that this game would be a complete and utter masterpiece. Is it? Well, let's play the game and find out. Well, after playing it, I can say that this game actually has quite a few problems. Most of the problems in this game are actually quite noticeable. Let's start off with the jumping. Like most home computer games back in the day, up is the jump. So, that doesn't come as a surprise unless you play console games and PC games. The reason the jumping is a problem is because of how Jim Power jumps. The jump gives you a very short range horizontally, so you'll have to be incredibly precise, which isn't easy since a lot of the time we'll be trying to jump on fast-moving platforms, often over a bed of spikes. These platforms also move vertically at the same time. So that's another thing to take into account. The level design could be better. If you don't collect every single key, you'll find yourself trapped and you'll have to start the whole game all over again. Another problem is the hit detection. This is one of those games where one hit from anything will instantly kill you. Very similar to Contra. But here, if something just barely, barely enters the space you're in, you'll die. So, you really can't let anything come near you. Which leads us to our last flaw. This game plays dirty. I'm not one to complain about a game being too hard for me. In fact, if you ever heard me complain about how underrated layer for the PS3 is, you should know I actually don't tolerate that kind of crap. But this is a game where it's just flat out freaking cheap. Especially as you progress into the game. However, let me talk about the positives. The graphics are actually really good with multiple layers of scrolling. Plus, some of the sprites are huge and very well animated. The regular stages are actually pretty fun, but where the game really shines is where you take to the skies on your jetpack, like in Turrican. Of course, the music is absolutely fantastic. This has to be one of Crystal's best works by far, and is often debated to be his best soundtrack of all time, and that is saying an awful lot. However, something that should be mentioned about the music is that the song in the first level is similar to one in Wise 3 called A Searing Struggle. Fanboys often go ballistic whenever someone praises Jim Power music. However, this was not done intentionally by Chris Hulsbeck. The song got stuck in his head, and when he made Forgotten Path, it turned out to be rather similar. Some of the fanboys have said that this is unlikely, however, I highly disagree with them for many reasons. One, Chris Hulsbeck is honest. He's brought this up in interviews, without even being asked about it. And, you know what, I've actually talked to him before. He's really nice, and he's really honest. Okay, reason number two. I make music. Not very good music, but music nonetheless. This has happened to me. And here's the evidence! <laughs> Number 
number three. They are actually different songs. The only part of Forgotten Path that sounds like a searing struggle is the very beginning. But even that's a little bit different. And to be honest, I like Forgotten Path from Jim Power a lot more than I like a searing struggle. It just seems to have more of a melody and more, or just it has much more of a sequence when a searing struggle seems to be a bit, a little bit more random. Okay. Now back to the game itself. It may be a bit flawed, but it can be pretty fun and pretty freaking cool. So I'll give I'll give it a rating of 8.4 out of 10. Now the Atari ST version of the game fixes some of the flaws of the Amiga version and is overall a little bit better gameplay-wise. However, since it's on Atari ST, presentation-wise, it's not as impressive. The music is still great, but I honestly like the Amiga version better. The graphics are similar, but there's no background scrolling, and there are less colors. So, when you compare it to the Amiga version, it's a bit of a balancing act. I guess I'll just give it the same rating, an 8.4 out of 10. There's also a version on the PC engine. This version really takes advantage of the CD capabilities and has the highest quality soundtrack. I don't have a PC engine, but I downloaded the soundtrack on seen it in action. can't really determine how good or bad it is, but the soundtrack blew my freaking ball. Now there was a remake, Jim Power and the Lost Dimension, in 3D. It was for the Super Nintendo and DOS computer. Let's play the Super Nintendo version first. Well, the graphics are a bit better. Or not. The scrolling is completely out of control, it'd make anyone motion sick. Not to mention, this game actually made use of 3D glasses. Thank god I'm not using them. The music is still freaking awesome, and at times even better. It really depends on your taste, but some of the songs will blow your mind more than they did on the other versions. They also fixed the jump quite well, however, they made the game even cheaper. MUCH cheaper. This is the freaking hardest game I have ever played in my entire life, and that's saying quite a bit. To be honest, I used a cheat code to get through the game, and yeah, as you'd suspect, it's very similar to the new plan. However, the ground stages are extended, the jetpack levels are replaced with some spaceship levels. These guys must have really liked Turrican. And they're cool and all, but they're not as fun as the jetpack. And there are also Mode 7, mode seven stages ripped straight from Contra 3. However, in these levels, the goal is to get all the keys so you can make it to the staircase, so the level can become ridiculously long and boring. The game can still be fun, but uh, it just seems like they took some of the best parts of New Planet, took them right out, replaced them with some not as good stuff, and it just overall, I don't like it. Over. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Now, let's look at the DOS version. Okay, this is a freaking awesome game. In terms of programming, this is the best one. For one thing, there's a health meter, and the enemies are under control, so this game is still very challenging, but it's also fair and fun this time around. It may not have the, it may have the boring overhead levels, but the rest of the game is great. Rolling is under control, thank god, and the music, yeah, it's awesome. This version, I'd recommend. It's a pretty freaking cool game, and a very fun one at that. It has its flaws here and there, but that doesn't detract much from the fun. However, at the same time, I don't feel it has as much charm as the original game. So, I guess I'll just give it what I gave the original games, an 8.4 out of 10. It may improve some things, but in the end, the original had more charm. So yeah, that's Jim Power. Um, no, I'm just going to be dancing to that freaking music for the next five hours. In a retarded manner, of course. <laughs>